Hello, everybody. Welcome to this course on Fuchsian differential equations. We are now in section in part nine of these lectures. So there will be a Christmas break next week, and I will inform you by mail when we'll continue after Christmas in the new year. Uh, <clears throat> I'm traveling at the beginning of January, so I'm not sure yet uh, what will be possible, but I, I let you know by email, okay? In any case, you will find always the notes and the exercises on the website. I hope you look from time to time also to these websites, to these exercises, and try to do some of them. So today, the program for today is the P curvature conjecture of Grodendieck and Katz, but in the case of just order one equations, where even there, it is not obvious, okay? So we will <coughs> prove that it is equivalent to a theorem of Kronecker in number theory. And uh, this, of course, order one is still quite basic, and we would like to do order two as well. But apparently already this case, order two, seems at the moment out of reach. So of course, <clears throat> one goal of the whole project is to get more insight and maybe ideas how to attack order two. So let me recall what we did last time. We had two theorems. The first one was Eisenstein, which says that, how did I call it, F in Q X algebraic implies F almost integral. And just <clears throat> to remind you, this means that F of, let's say, L times X is in ZX. Some L in N, not zero. Okay. So this was <clears throat> one fact which is a little bit surprising. Meanwhile, I found out that there are several different proofs. I did not have the time to look at them. So it seems that several people, many people have tried to prove this on their own. And we have already finished the proof of it. The proof actually was quite simple afterwards. But that's always, uh, once you have a proof, you think it was easy. But so it was number one. And number two was, maybe I call this Abel Kotl Harley. Again, many more people have thought about it, which says that F in C X algebraic, then F D finite, which was recall <coughs> solution of linear differential equation with polynomial coefficients. I just realized that my pen again is fading out. Is this one better? Or maybe I take it afterwards. So <clears throat> now the, the big question is, whether we can go back. Can we go back? And I will make this precise in uh, the case of order one equations, at least. So before we go to the p curvature conjecture of Grodnick itself, let me mention again the conjecture of Bézivin. Bézivin conjecture which in some sense is more aesthetic than the Grotendieck conjecture. So <clears throat> if <clears throat> Ly equals 0, L, now we assume from the very beginning that we have polynomial coefficients. So everything over Q, uh, x del, 
as a <coughs> as a basis of solutions in sorry for the sound of this pen base of solution now with integer coefficients just power series no logarithms so here by Eisenstein we can reduce to the case where we have a in coefficients in z and not just uh, up to multiplication. So if you have a base over z of x, uh, so we have now both conditions. We have this condition of definiteness and almost integral. Yeah. And <coughs> uh, definite almost integral basis. then the basis consists already of algebraic series. Then the basis consists of algebraic series. So I think this is a very elegant statement, easy to understand, hard to prove. Actually, it's open. And uh, it is, philosophically speaking, it is interesting because it combines analysis, which appears in the differential equation, with algebraicity. Okay? And whenever we, we merge two fields, we are happy. So in, for order one, so <clears throat> case order one. So then L is particularly simple. So L would be just del minus R of x R a rational function. Okay. Then this just reads then Ly equals zero just means that y prime equals r of x y. Okay. So <clears throat> as we just have order one, we just have one non zero solution. Then the conjecture reads as follows. If you cannot read my pen, please let me know. Let me call this here star. Okay. What does the conjecture tell you? If you just have one non-zero solution, if star has a non-zero <coughs> solution in Zx, so power series, I don't allow logarithms. If I have a non zero solution in, in Zx, so power series solution, say y of x, then y of x is already algebraic. over Q, over the field of rational functions. So here, in the statement for order n, you have to look at the basis, otherwise there are counterexamples. But for order one, you just need one non-zero solution. So if you look at this, you think, oh, I sit down and prove it. So challenge. We know that it is true in this case. <clears throat> Prove that this is true. Prove on your own that this is true. It's very tempting, no? 
Yeah? Ah, this must be possible. So any other solution here in this situation is a constant multiple of y of x. So you just have to find the minimal polynomial of y. OK? So find minimal polynomial. So of course, you can, you can write this here as also as the logarithmic derivative, y prime over y is r of x. And then try to integrate this yeah, with the logarithmic integral or the logarithmic derivative. And uh, you have a concrete hold on your rational function r of x. No? So not so clear. No? Maybe I should. <clears throat> maybe, should, maybe I should give a prize. Yeah. So we will <clears throat> small prize. If you go to my website, so not to the of the course website, but to my personal one, and you you look at the uh, you know that I have made the visualizations of algebraic surfaces. So the, if somebody finds a solution, I will offer a sweatshirt. Sweatshirt with singular surface on it. So it's a visualization. And uh, if you want to, to look at these singular surfaces, Go to and there to the gallery. So maybe this seduces to to try this challenge. I tell you from the beginning, it will not be an easy task. Yeah? So <clears throat> I'm not going to prove it here. I'm going to prove the. Grotendieck conjecture in for order one equations today. So that's a slightly different flavor. So <clears throat> another challenge is, uh, but I put it as a question. I will formulate the Grotendieck conjecture in a moment again. But another interesting question is, at least for order one, is it equivalent to the Grotendieck conjecture? Is it, it is <coughs> apparently weaker than the Grotendieck conjecture. Is it equivalent to Grotendieck P curvature conjecture? So it is clear that. The P curvature conjecture implies the Bézivan conjecture. That's not hard to see. So the Bézivan conjecture a priori is a weaker statement, maybe also easier to prove. But it could be that the two are actually equivalent. OK. So let me now formulate uh, the Rodendieck P curvature conjecture as a theorem in for order one equations. But before I have to erase again. So for the Grotendieck conjecture, we will enter a little bit of algebraic number theory and uh, I'm not sure if there is a proof without using algebraic number theory. So theorem. And it's not clear whom to credit this, to whom to credit this theorem, but I would mention Katz, Cartier. Honda, 
So Honda is the reference I'm using. The proof is a modification of his proof. So this is now a P curvature conjecture. for order one equations. And instead of proving it, I will prove that it is equivalent to a theorem from algebraic number theory. Equivalent R number one, <coughs> every first order linear differential equation, do I want to write it, Ly equals 0, <coughs> L in. Now we are only over the rationals, Qx del, as before, which admits for almost all primes p, a non zero solution in FP x, finite field, rational function, a non zero solution in FP x, we can only have one, already has. an algebraic power series solution. In Q, X, and then if you want also in Z, over Z. Okay, so to be precise, maybe I have to admit here rational exponents, so for don't blame me on this. Maybe you have to take x1 over e in order to include all algebraic. This is the Puiseux series. Okay. Number two is now the result of Kronecker from number theory. <coughs> So I will formulate the statement, and then I will explain more what I mean. Every algebraic number alpha in C whose reduction modulo. And now we have to take prime ideals modulo prime ideals, which I write like this, script P in K equals Q adjoint alpha. I will explain what I mean by a prime ideal in this field. It will be a prime ideal in the ring of integers, actually. Yeah. Modulo prime ideal P lies in FP is already A rational number. And number three, which is easier to formulate. Now, here we need the primes of this ring of integers, but in the statement three, we don't need it. It is another version of Kronecker theorem. So if a polynomial Yeah, maybe I call it capital P in Qx factors linearly, so factors in linear factors, linearly modulo P prime. And if I write P like this, it is a prime number in Z. If it's factors linearly modulo P prime for 
almost all p in z, then it factors linearly in qx. Okay. And now this pen is gone. I think I switched to red because this is a new pen. So this is also a Kronecker. And I'll so number three is clear because you don't have to know anything, uh, just uh, linear factorization. Number two and three are equivalent, but I did not find a good reference. Yeah? So that's a, the remark. And then I will explain in more detail number two. Two equivalent three. I don't have a good reference for this. I will ask two people. Uh, so maybe you can help me out, find an elementary reference. And both are special cases of Chibotares. density theorem. Which is cited by Honda. But actually, you only need a very special case, which is this one. You don't have to know anything about the density, except that for almost all primes, this works. OK? So <clears throat> let me explain a little bit. I think number one is clear. Number three is also clear. So. I am not the expert in number theory, I have to admit. And uh, so I have to explain a little bit this reduction model of P before I give you the proof. Okay. Any questions so far to the statement here? Everybody happy? So we can continue. So reduction. So this concerns condition two. So we have alpha in C algebraic, minimal polynomial F in QX. So we have K equals Q joint alpha, which is also Qx mod f. OK, number field. And then inside k, we have OK, the ring of integers of k. So these are the elements which are integral over z, elements of k integral, the monic equation integral over z, this is sitting inside k. And in this ring, we can consider prime ideals. Take prime ideals p in OK, and then we can take the quotient. The so prime ideals are maximal because this is a principal ideal domain. So <coughs> take prime ideal and the reduction OK mod P. So that's what we mean here by reduction of alpha mod P. Okay inside here. We could call this alpha prime. Now, where does the prime number appear? Note, if you z is, of course, inside OK. And if you intersect the primary P with z, P 
intersect at z. This will be a prime ideal in z. And this will be then of the form p times z, p in z, a prime number. So I distinguish carefully between prime ideals and prime numbers. And of course, the, the terminology is that script p lies over Roman p. Lies over p in z. There could be several prime ideas lying over p, of course. OK. Now, there is a classification of these prime ideals. I'm not going to into this. But what we have to know is that <coughs> uh, OK is a finite z module. So I derive some z, the gamma 1, f3, the gamma k. And so gamma n, sorry. And of rank n equals the extension degree, q alpha over q. We don't need all these details, but just to give you a little bit of background. <coughs> Now, moreover, if we now take this quotient, OK mod P will contain FP, the field is P elements, is a finite field extension. In some cases, it's even equal, but in general, it is not equal. It's a strict inclusion. Okay. And uh, so when we take alpha bar, we can ask whether alpha bar lies even in FP. Hence, alpha bar in FP is a non void condition. except if the extension is trivial, OK? <clears throat> so you can reformulate Kronecker as follows. If alpha bar in FP for almost all P, then alpha in Q. OK? Oh, this red works well. It's very pleasant to write with it. OK? And I need an addendum, which is used in the proof. So there's also an article. Maybe I should mention here also, if you want to read more about this, by Schaumbert Loire. Schaumbert Loire. So this is called algebraicity, algebraicity. And it's a Bubaki talk. And it embeds the theory in the much more general theory about uh, reductions of Lie groups modulo p, which I'm not going to discuss here. But it's, the introduction is very nice to read. So the addendum is the following. If alpha as alpha is in this k, then it need not be in the ring of integers, but we know that alpha will be beta divided by some integer, beta in OK, and m in n. So up to multiplying with an integer, we can assume alpha to be in OK, and then we can reduce it. And without loss of generality, we will assume for this reduction that alpha is already in OK, integral over z. And not just algebraic, OK? And then the hypothesis in 2 and 3 is the following. Then 
for almost all P in OK, there exists, now I write N sub P in Z. So I mean now this condition that it alpha bar lies in FP such that you will see more details in the notes. Alpha is congruent to NP mod P. So this is two of theorem, the hypothesis of two in the theorem. Okay. Can you still read this? No. Forget about it. Hypothesis of two of the theorem. Okay. So uh, this is a little bit of number theory. And uh, what the time? Yes. <clears throat> so I will give you now the proof of the equivalence between one and two using this addendum. Okay. So <clears throat> do you remember this? I will erase it in any case. So maybe I can tell you a little bit about Honda. So Honda, Taira Honda gave a a series of lectures in Japan, I think it was in 1971 or something. And the article I'm referring to is just the write-up of some of the people who attended the lecture, because soon after the lecture, Honda passed away. So it is not his proper article. And there are also some ambiguities in the article. So it is the article is very nice and correct, but it's not as complete, maybe, as one would, would hope. OK. So proof of the theorem. So 1 implies 2 goes fast. So, <clears throat> ah, yeah. So, I just erased, but in the differential equation, I think I wrote it down for differential operators having coefficients over Q. But the formulation actually holds also for differential operators defined over the number field K. K is Q adjoint alpha. So, this I will need it here. So, let alpha and c be algebraic, k equals q alpha, <clears throat> alpha in OK without loss of generality. And then we take the following. I mean, there's not much choice how to use now here a differential equation. Consider. L equals, you take the simplest one, the simplest differential operator which comes to your mind. This is now, as I just said, an operator defined over K, yeah, because here we have the alpha. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> so L of Y is X, Y prime minus alpha y. And we know what the solutions are. There's solution y of x equals x to the alpha. Now x to the alpha, alpha is a complex number, has to be interpreted as the exponential of alpha times log x. We are in characteristic zero. Now by the addendum, the hypothesis of two, 
the hypothesis in two tells us, as I said before, alpha is congruent to n script p mod p with n p now in z. Okay. So now we plug in <clears throat> we get so we can write uh, L now we take x to the n p I hope I get my n p right so this will be n P, X, and P minus alpha X and P equal the factor X to the NP and P minus alpha, and this is zero. So a simple trick. But this implies that alpha. No, sorry. So we have an. Sorry, 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 sorry. Up, 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 up. You have to be careful. This now holds modulo P. Hence. Ly equals zero has modulo p, even a monomial solution. And here we have we had to exclude some p's, but that doesn't matter here. So this implies from by by condition one. x alpha with solution in characteristic 0 is algebraic. But a monomial is algebraic if it only if the exponent is rational. Therefore, the exponent alpha must be rational. Thank you. Okay. So that's just a, a nice trick to use a differential equation of a very simple shape to deduce here the rationality of alpha. That's the easy, easy direction. And for the other one, I think we take a short break. Or maybe I start a little bit. No, I think we take a short five minutes break, and then I will give you the opposite direction. So take a little bit of fresh air, and we continue in five minutes. OK, I am back again. I hope you are still here. So let us prove the other implication. Proof of theorem 2 implies 1. This is the interesting direction. <coughs> <clears throat> and uh, again, here to find a, <clears throat> a proof of assertion one without using the result of Kronecker would be interesting. So write L y equals as before, y prime minus r of x times y. Yes. Now I correct myself. I take immediately k a number field <coughs> and r a rational function. OK. 
Okay. So what is the assumption? The assumption is that we have a modulo p solutions in fpx. Assume that for almost all p in OK, Ly equals 0 has modulo p as solution in fpx. You could even take polynomial if you want, doesn't matter. Okay. Now we, we fix some p, fix some p, and let y of x be a respective solution in fpx. Okay, so please distinguish between my script p and my prime numbers p. So now we, we make a factorization of y of x. y of x is a rational function, so we can factorize it over an algebraic closure. Factorize y of x linearly over an extension, so maybe uh, fp bar. So let me write this down. Y of x, I need the number, the notation. I equals 1 up to s, x minus the gamma i e to the i. So the ei will be in z because we have a rational function. And the gamma i will be in fp bar. OK? It uh, so suffices to take a finite extension, but don't care. OK? All these, the gamma i and the e i, will depend on, on p. e i and gamma i depend on p, but I don't write this in the notation. OK? Further, right now we we take as before R x is now equal to <coughs> y prime x y of x. Now this here is in k x a rational function. So <coughs> sorry. That's not that's not what I wanted to do. Too fast. If I if I plug in here y, I'm already modulo p. Sorry. Mod p. But we can take the, now this expression here and derive this uh, and we get, yeah, this gives, by the usual uh, rules for differentiation, r of x, the only thing which arrives, we will get now a sum, i equals 1 to s of ei, which comes down, and here we get x minus gamma i mod p. We don't need the prime here. Okay. Just by plugging in here. But r lies in k of x, but r is in kx does not depend on p in OK. So we have here, for the same r and for all p, this congruence here. OK? We get a congruence for r of x 
for almost all p. So this is one way to describe r of x. The second one is we can just use partial fraction. On the other hand, use partial fraction expansion. in cakes. And then we compare, com compare the two formulas we have. Now r of x is a rational function, so it will be a polynomial part, q of x, plus, and now uh, we have a sum, again, i from 1 to s, sum j equals 1 to certain ti. And we have, in the numerator, we have certain polynomials qijx divided by x minus. Now I call this lambda i to the j. And this holds in kx and with polynomials qij and q. <coughs> and uh, the j is, of course, an integer. And the lambda i are the roots of the numerator, the roots sorry, of the denominator. Of R with multiplicity T I. Yes. OK. Correct. Now, in this expression, for almost all p, we take, <coughs> let me call this here sharp, we may reduce this modulo p for almost all p in OK, we may reduce sharp mod. P. Okay. We have to take care that the, because the Q and the QIJ could have numerators themselves. So now we can compare these two. And we have seen here that we have modulo P, this kind of expansion. So this holds now for all. Let me give here a name. Did I use star? Maybe I call this triangle. Okay. Now comparing sharp mod p with delta gives, and I leave you, leave it to you to check this that the q, the polynomial part, must be 0. It's identically 0. And the qij are also 0, but only if we have a multiplicity larger than 1. So this for j at least 2 and all i. And moreover, Sorry, here we have still mod p. Mod p, mod p. This is by direct comparison. It's not even a, it's not even a, yeah. Now we have still the case j equals 1. j equals 1 corresponds here to having to the x minus lambda i without exponent in the denominator. 
set qi1 di in C. These are now constants. And get r of x equals sum i equals 1 up to s di x minus lambda i. Now the j has disappeared because we just take the case j equals 1 above. Okay. So now this holds uh, in kx. We are almost done. Now, if we compare again, we see that the di, where were the ei? Yes, the di, hold on a second. The di will be even actually in k. Sorry, in k, we get that di is congruent to these numbers ei mod p. Now ei lie in z, these lie in k, and now we can apply Kronecker. Applying to Kronecker gives that the di are actually rational. But if the di are rational, then uh, our y will be algebraic. But y prime of x over y of x, now well, that's maybe not very good. Because now I do it in, in kx. Let me write, excuse me, let me write here now, as I used already, as I used already y of x for my solution modulo p, let me call it here z of x. But in kx we have <coughs> and the solution z of x in kx of l z equals 0. Let me write it like this. Now I'm running out of space for the last line. We get now from this here, maybe I can write it here. We just take where do I have my equation, my bom, bom, bom. here? I can, if I don't look at this mod p, but now for z inside over k, then I take the logarithmic integration. We get, I still write it here. I hope you can read it. Yes, my pen is not best, but yeah. We get y of x, now z of x, now it's a little bit a mess, but I apologize. Z of x, we just have to integrate here, and we get the product i equals 1 to s. We pass from this to the logarithmic integral, and this gives x minus lambda i di. And this is algebraic. over kx, okay? Because the di are in, in q, okay? So this concludes, concludes the proof here of the equivalence. So the main thing is that you use this Kronecker result uh, to get the statement. Now for Bézivin, you would like to have a proof without reduction modulo p. So let me write this down. Mm. 
when you try to prove Beziva, because one can use the same proof, but the question is, does there exist a proof of Beziva's conjecture for order one equations without using reduction modulo p and number theory. No, the formulation of the conjecture does not use anything from characteristic p. And uh, it would be very nice to have a direct proof of this. OK. So this was concerning, concerning the P curvature conjecture. You will find more details and more comments in the notes, which will be ready soon. And to conclude for today, and as a kind of Christmas present, not really present, but Christmas surprise, I want to finish today with the exponential function in characteristic p. <clears throat> and this will be a kind of philosophical remark. So you remember that when we developed our normal form theorem in characteristic 0 and the theory, when we talked about the theory of Fuchs, Frobenius, and Tomé, we had to introduce an extra variable z to take into account the lack of a, a primitive of 1 over x. So this is a, how should I call it? It's not a Christmas present, but it is a <clears throat> remark is maybe not a nice word, but uh, let me just call it uh, a side. The exponential function. This has nothing to do with the Grothendieck conjecture. I will talk about the Grothendieck conjecture in the next classes again a little bit, but now I want to finish with something here. x of x equals y of x in positive characteristic. P. So, of course, we want to solve y prime equals y. Solve y prime equals y over a field of characteristic p. Now, in characteristic 0, we know in characteristic 0, x of x is sum 1 over k factorial x to the k from 0 to infinity. So it has infinitely many primes, actually all primes appearing in the denominators. All primes appear in the denominators. So it is impossible to reduce x of x modulo p. Okay. So does there exist a way to solve this equation? Now, uh, recall 
in characteristic zero, we added a formal primitive z for 1 over x. Of course, z, we could call it the logarithm of x. But it's sufficient to take it abstractly. z prime equals 1 over x. Now, in characteristic p, any monomial which is a piece power is sent under differentiation to 0. x p prime is 0. So the constants, hence the ring of constants, in k adjustic power series is k power series in x to the p. So of course, whenever we have a solution, we can multiply it with a constant. If y of x is a solution of some ly equals 0, also, x to the p, y of x, is a solution, trivially. No? So <clears throat> now comes the following. We had, in characteristic 0, we needed polynomials in z. In characteristic zero, we used polynomials in Z. To construct a basis of solutions. But in characteristic p, we are not able to use the, to apply integration to z. In characteristic p, the monomial z to the p minus 1, which will appear, yeah, has no primitive. There doesn't exist any monomial in z which will give this one because zp prime is 0. So this is now work of Florian Fjonsin from the University of Vienna, writing his PhD with me. So what he did is he introduced more primitives introduce a primitive z2 for z p minus 1 and call z equals z1. So <clears throat> this z2 is a new variable. And as you, are mul yes, you are allowed to multiply with powers of p, <clears throat> subject to, we extend the differentiation, z to prime. And now we can forget about this z to the p, we just want z to the minus 1. But for reasons which will not be clear yet, we also take 1 over x times 1 over z1. Okay, so this is now an extension of our field of functions where we 
our differential field of functions where we want to solve. Now, the same problem occurs for z2 to the p minus 1, repeating this construction. We need countably many variables. Z1 equals Z, Z2, and so on, with differentiation. Zi plus 1 prime defined 1 over x product Z1 up to Zi. Now this here, this mimics the differentiation rule for the iterated logarithm. Differentiation for log 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 x in characteristic zero. It's precisely the same rule. Okay. So you get now, you end up in a huge uh, ring where you, the function space where you're working in, will be power series in x with coefficients, rational functions in the zi. So k, z1, z2, infinitely many, power series in x. And there you can solve your equation, and there you will find the exponential function. Yeah. <clears throat> so one can even take a smaller space, but let's stick to this one. And then I need to look for the formula. So <clears throat> here we can solve differential equations in characteristic p, e.g., exp of x. Now, maybe I should now write exp of x and z, because we also need the z. It will be a huge expression, so I only do it in characteristic 3. I think I want to do it for characteristic 3. p equals 3. It starts with x's, 1 plus x plus 2x squared, plus now you get a z1 plus x4 times 1 plus 2z1, so it's very complicated, plus x5z1 plus 2x to the 6z1 square. This continues. So you need, at the beginning, you just need x's. Then you need the z1. And then when you come to degree 9, which is p square, you need x9. And now z2 will appear. 2z1 plus z1 cubed z2 plus and so on. And this will involve all zi. Involves all zi. So you cannot do it with finitely many. You need all of them. And with this differentiation rule, you solve this equation here. Okay. You can do this for any prime number, and you get an exponential function. Now, what is not clear, what is the meaning of this expansion? Is there a structure behind? Can you give a formula? Like this, it looks quite arbitrary. So that's not clear at all. And uh, there's one final remark, which is uh, kind of very surprising. If you just look 
at those terms which do not depend on z, which is this one here, this one here, and then it comes up again. It is a power series. So if you take exp of x and 0, then experimentation shows that this, what you would could call the constant term of your exponential function by putting z equal to 0, seems to be algebraic. over kx. So this has been tested for small prime numbers, I think up to p equal 11, taking the expansion up to a sufficiently high degree, maybe degree 100 or 200. And the minimal polynomial which occurs is of a very special shape. It is not proven that it is algebraic, but it seems to be, at least uh, it's very plausible that this is the case. So here. Something pops up which was completely unexpected. We don't understand it. But we know how to solve, we know how to solve equations in characteristic P by adding now countably many variables. Okay. So this gives you a kind of idea what are the phenomena and uh, results for differential equations in characteristic P. I think I will tell you a little bit more in general, about this characteristic p phenomena. And meanwhile, I hope that you have a nice time. And maybe you, you want to try the challenge and send me an email with a solution for the busy one conjecture. So have a wonderful vacation. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I will contact you again at the beginning of January. Bye bye. Have a wonderful time. Thanks, bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice holiday too.